two in the morning, rest is getting harder. Hello, welcome, Devil Sniper here, and today I'm bringing you a slightly different video. It's about the career mode players that we've had at West Ham United. As you can see, Adas Lad 69 asked me this question. I thought, you know what, this would be a great video to make, and it'll be fun. Hopefully, you guys are enjoy it, and uh, I can give you my thoughts and opinions why A, we got rid of them, and uh, yeah, why, why we got rid of them, and why they didn't work. Tank. Oh, faultless. I'm going to say he was faultless. You know, he had so many good things about him. His stamina, his pace, his acceleration, his sprint speed, his head and accuracy, his slide tackle, you know, his stand tackle. He was a powerhouse. He was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. We had him at a time where we were going through a few changes and we needed someone big and strong and powerful at the back. And you guys recommended the tank and he worked perfectly. I enjoyed him immensely until I started to feel that we were conceding goals because players were out of position. And the one player I could only find who was truly out of position more than Lukaku when he was at the club was the tank. And as you can see, because he can play a centre-back, a CDM, a CM and a CAM, he has medium-medium work rates, which is not too much of a problem than medium-medium. But it's the fact that he did like to wander up pitch more than uh, I would personally like. And it, it, it caused us to concede a few goals. And that was the main reason why I swapped him for Kolka. And I think we got a better end of the bargain. Tompkins. I think we'd all had enough of Tompkins and his uh, wanting additional money. And the, uh, yeah, just general wranglings. Never really accepting additional contracts. And on top of that, he wanted extra money. Though he was a good player, I never expected to get him that high, to be honest. And I was quite chuffed that we did. And again, I think we've done a, a good piece of business. We got good money for him. And I think we brought in a decent player as well in, in the form of Callus. Uh, Notcart. Now, not many people, unless you've watched this from Season 1, will know we had Notcart. And uh, Notcart was a good player. But I think he came at a time where we had too many of the same players. Too many of the same sort of ilk of player, which... Um, well, just led to him not really having a lot of opportunities. Marky Noble made space for the return of Suzoko. This was probably one of the hardest decisions I think I've made in this career mode. You know, even harder than the, the Gab situation, which when we got rid of Gabs the first time round, literally did break my freaking heart. Because uh, I love Gabs, he's just the hidden gem in the game. Mark Noble in the real world is one of my favourite players. Absolute freaking tank. I actually have a West Ham shirt with Noble on the back. I love him that much. Um... James Ward-Prowse, fantastic player. The only reason he left West Ham United was I'd done a counter-offer to Real Madrid for just over £7.5 I think it was, and Real Madrid came back and accepts it. At the time, he was worth, I think it was like £3.5 and, and the most you could get for him was like four, five million. And um, yeah, they came back and swallowed the £7.5 million. We let Potsy go, and um, purely because Potsy... As much as he's a good player, he just struggled to... When he when he had a prolonged run in the team, he didn't have any real growth. And that really frustrated me. Um, Robbie... Br I'm not talking about that, come. And uh, Matty Jarvis. Very good player. You know, he was part of the, the Allardyce regime. He Allardyce brought him in. And uh, he didn't work out for us. And as you can see, we used him in the swap deal to, uh, to bring Filippo Bonaparte to the club. So, do you know what? Getting rid of Matty Jarvis might have annoyed a few people, but we bought Filippo in. And uh, I think I think that is testament to my management skills. And you guys, because you guys recommended Filippo. Come on, I'm not going to forget that, because this career mode is about us, not just me. I'm just here to uh, to annoy you with my vocal cords and hopefully give you enjoyment with my cock-ups. Look at Dorian Jean. I love Dorian Jean, okay? Look, our tea ladies are called Dorian and Jean. They bring me cakes, they bring me Jaffa cakes, they make me cups of tea, they bring me chocolate frickin' eclairs. But the problem with Dorian Jean is the fact... He can only play left wing, and that is so frustrating. And I mean, it is. Look at his, his acceleration. You know, he, he has such good potential, but being limited to left wing is beyond frustrating. His weak foot, his skill moves, his work rates, perfect, absolutely bloody perfect. Apart from the fact he can only play left wing, and we never really played a four-three-three. And um, there you go, Matty Phillips. We bought him in, and I had huge hopes for this guy. I thought he was going to be the best player in his career mode. I honestly thought he was going to be magnificent and, you know, excel on, and he never did. And from the looks of it, he never has. And that was really, really quite garrant because he had so much potential. At times, he would play like a genius, and other times, you would really wonder why you actually had him on the pitch because he was so frustrating. His first touch at times was just appalling. You know, his passing at times was appalling, and it was really, really frustrating. Victor Fisher, yes, we've had Victor Fisher, and he's probably growing the most. And uh, quite impressive statistics, but we used him to uh, to bring Isco from Malaga to West Ham. 
So again, I think you know when you look at when you look at Victor Fisher's stats, take a look at Isco. Go back and have a look at uh, a latest squad report of Isco, and you'll clearly see that Isco is just majestic, fantastic, a brilliant genius, and plays like a god. And um, yeah, so I was quite happy with that. Nathaniel Klein, I felt like a change. I felt we needed a change in in the back four, and we've done it with Tompkins, but I also felt we needed a change in the right back position. Because Nathaniel was was funny again with money, you know, always wanting a few extra quid and shit like that. And uh, I think we got the better in the deal by bringing Kyle Walker, to be honest. Um, Nathan Redman, again, you would have to have been watching his career mode since season one to to see that we had Nathan Redman. I think the problem with Nathan Redman was he came in when we had too many midfielders. At one time we had, I think it was like thirteen or fourteen players in the centre of the park or right midfield, left midfield, and it was just too many. Absolutely too many. I couldn't. I didn't have enough games to rotate them enough, and obviously players were getting pissed off, and I was getting pissed off. A few of you guys were getting pissed off. So we, we literally cleared out a whole host of midfielders and brought in you know additional defenders and additional strikers. This guy we actually never played with him. We we sold him straight away to be honest to generate cash. Andy Carroll. You know, I don't think many of us. If you've been watching his career mode since the beginning, I don't think many of us will forget the goal he scored after that 10 game drought. I mean, what a goal that was. How important that goal was. Wow, that was an important goal. Bassi, fantastic player. Do you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna lay this down on the table and say I wish I never sold him. But we had to to get cash. We got cash and we bought in better players at the end of the day. But um, yeah, I wish I never actually sold him because uh, you only have to look at his, his statistics. 81 finishing, his pace, everything. He's, um, he's pretty damn impressive. You know, he has the best work rates ever. High and low. Absolute beast. I, I, I'm I, so tempted to put an offer in, but I don't know what, you know, we'd be talking about 15, 16 million. I mean, if you're talking 15, 16 million, you're talking like um, Luke De Jong. I mean, he's a fantastic player and a proven player, but bassy has got the age, so who knows? But we have got Rocker, we have got Miguel, so who knows? Jose, oh, I love Jose. I feel sorry for Hawley, and uh, for those who do remember, he scored the, uh, the winning goal in the FA Cup. I let him go because, honestly, I didn't think it was fair for him to be sitting on the bench. I wanted him to play football because, you know, the likes of Rocker and Miguel makes it so hard to break in the team. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Something slow, totally, totally different, and I'll catch you later. Hey, so